Hey guys, Bobby here, coming at you with the fifth video in this series all about how to edit a wedding film, where I'm taking behind the scenes on a live edit of a real wedding film from just a few months ago. I'm breaking down everything that I do along the way from offloading onto your drives all the way through to final delivery to your couple. And if you've missed the videos before this, I'd highly recommend watching them quick so that you aren't lost. And in this video, I'm gonna go over how I clean up and finalize the audio tracks for our film. Real quick, if you want to make sure to see future videos in this series and other tutorials as well, there's a link to my email list in the description, which is the best way to make sure you get notified. All right, so we're back in our editor in Final Cut, and you can see that the entire video is now cut. Um, and just a quick note, because we were coming off of our video on crafting and sequencing and markers specifically, and I had a lot of these markers um, but as I mentioned before, a lot of these didn't end up being what I wanted. Um, basically just, again, you can be flexible with this as I got down here. I know I wanted these things around here. Some were a hard marker, like the, uh, you know, the first look reveal, which I think I had right here. But a lot of them were more, you know, hey, I want it around here. Um, but, you know, like this one, the bride down the aisle. I tried it out and I just thought that it worked better over here in a sequence with him seeing her and, and stuff like that. So again, you can be flexible on those. Now, beyond that, we're moving into kind of the finishing touches. And for me, this takes multiple forms. There's kind of three different videos we're gonna have here. And you can really do these in any order. So it's gonna be your color grade, it's gonna be your finishing touches on the visual side, and then your finishing touches on the audio side. Um, in this video, we're gonna go over the audio side. Now. I like to clean my audio up in a program called Isotope, uh, which I highly recommend you get. Uh, if you can hold out, they often have some big sales. Um, I think I got this for like 30 bucks or something, but it's usually like 100 bucks maybe. And I just get the basic version. It does everything that I need it to, and it is an incredibly powerful tool that is very intuitive and does a lot of things automatically, which I love, because audio is not really a strong suit for me. I need to get it to where I feel like it's okay, um, presentable, uh, you know, something that isn't gonna take somebody out of the story, but I don't know how to do that, you know, a lot of those things on my own. And so RX Elements has made that really easy to at least get kind of a base level and then go in and make some tweaks from there. Um, so typically what I would do is if I'm using, you know, I have vows, I have toasts, um, and again, none of this is color graded, nothing visual is kind of finalized here. Um, so yeah, vows, toasts, part of the ceremony, stuff like that, is I would maybe go in and do that uh, like do the whole track because each track is going to be different um, as far as cleaning up the audio and then I would just use that for my like syncing in my ceremony and stuff like that but I didn't really want to make you, make you guys sit through all that so I'm going to go ahead and do it this way which is after I've already cut um, the video I'm going to grab the audio clips which I mean this is a totally doable way as well these two right here are applause during their first kiss um, but I'm gonna grab all this, which is my audio. All this is something else. Um, so yeah, these are my audio clips. This is some vows, some ceremony from the efficient, uh, some toast, stuff like that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and copy. Actually, I could just export this selection, but I just like to keep everything separate. So I'm gonna just make a new project and just call it audio export. Doesn't really matter what the setting, oh, I already have one. All right, so we're gonna go into audio export then. And I don't know what these were, but we're gonna go in here. We're gonna paste this, and I do like to keep these where they are, because that means after I clean it up, I can just drop it right back into uh, my timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to share a master file. Audio export, Emily, Chris. Wow, I can spell. And we'll go into settings and just do audio only as a wave, hit next. And I'll put this in my folder here. I'm very unorganized. And we're gonna name this audio full, um, just cause it looks like I have some other ones in there. Now we're gonna go into 
isotope rx elements just drag this in now isotope does have a plugins for all these in final cut or a lot of the things they do but for some reason i can't get them to work it always crashes my system um so i don't mind just bringing it in i actually like the visualization a little bit better in the program of uh, isotope so um, and I'm gonna play you some examples um, before and after, but you might hear some of this while I'm working. Today, Chris and Emily take us out of our usual routines, favorite places we know on this earth. Being these vows while holding your hand on them. So this audio is actually pretty decent as is. Now this was in Glacier National Park uh, in an incredibly windy day at the foot of a, you know, some mountains and a lake and just a lot of wind noise. Um, we had a lot of mics going. We had the bride mic'd. We had everybody mic'd. Um, we had the right coat, uh, like wind jammers or whatever they're called, uh, which did a decent job. But there's still some noise. So uh, I'm going to see if I can get rid of some of that. But, you know, in this case specifically, I'm not as concerned with that ceremony stuff because I think it is kind of part of the raw element, part of the, you know, the setting almost. It plays a role. Um, but I might want to try cleaning that up. Um, that never fails to be there for me. That's some toast audio. Where when we talk. We're toast audio, stuff like that, which again, the toast uh, came in this very small room that was right next to the kitchen. It was very noisy. Um, so, you know, we're going to try and clean all this up, but I'm just going to show you what my typical routine is, and that involves a few things in Isotope. So um, let's start here. And again, I'm going to take these one at a time. Typically, I would be doing the full track before I lined anything up and synced it. Um, but the first thing is voice denoise. So let's go ahead and um, run that. So you're gonna click voice denoise. And the nice thing is that you can just click learn and it will give you kind of a suggestion um, for what it thinks you should do. I optimize for the dialogue and you can go ahead and you can play around with these settings. Let's just hit process. And now this is a bit quieter, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back up, at least close to where I want it. So Emily, take us out of our usual routines. And I'll usually go in in Final Cut and do the final tweaks as far as like the audio levels, um, but I like to get it somewhere close in here at least. Our usual routines to share their love with. All right, so let's go ahead and just listen to this one. We're gonna listen to it um, before the voice denoise and then after voice denoise. Today, Chris and Emily take us out of our usual routines to share their love with us and to share their love of one of their favorite places in the world so far, Glacier National Park. Today, Chris and Emily take us out of our usual routines to share their love with us and to share their love of one of their favorite places in the world so far, Glacier National Park. All right, so after I do voice to noise, I also like to do a few other things. Um, I'll typically do the phase and just let it suggest. Um, these are usually all over the place and I just kind of trust it on that. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this for all of them. So I'll do my voice to noise. I'll make it learn because this is a new clip. I'll check it real quick. And then I'll bring this up. Places we know on this earth. We have gathered the ones who mean the most to celebrate our unity and marriage in a way that feels the most us. Bring this up just a tiny bit more. We have gathered the ones who mean the most. We'll do the phase on it. You can tell that one was different. And then we'll just work our way through the entire thing. Now, I didn't really fiddle around with it that much. Typically, I would. Uh, one more thing I like to do on everything um, is this de-click feature. Um, that works for just a lot of things. I feel like, um, you know, it helps for if there's any, uh, like, photographer clicks or anything like that. It also helps sometimes with like the pops and stuff, um, you know, on P's and T's and stuff like that on a mic. Um, 
I don't really find that this ever detracts from the audio, so I typically like to run that on everything. And while I'm doing that, I'll mention that there are a bunch of other great tools in Isotope, specifically D-Clip. Um, if you have an audio track that is too hot and it is clipping, this works some wonders as far as bringing that back. And there are other things in here as well. D-Hum, although I typically like to do that myself with like an EQ and stuff like that. Um, but again, really strong, powerful uh, tool here in Isotope um, that really does get that job done and is pretty reasonably priced. So after Isotope, I'm gonna go ahead and export this. All right, so then I'll go full RX, I'll import that. It starts right there, bring that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off all these clips. I like to keep them there in case I need them. These again are the uh, other things here. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna cut these up because I want to apply, you know, different things potentially to different parts of them. Um, and I'm just gonna cut out some of these gaps too, like the big ones at least. All right, and then I wanna go ahead and there's a few things that I also like to do to my audio. The first of which, if I just go up here, and if I spell it correctly, is to add a compressor. Um, there's a few that come with Final Cut. Um, I like this one, it's just the one that I've found works the best for me, um, but you can do whatever you want. So what that does is kind of just evens out your high points and low points in your audio. Um, not entirely, but it brings them a little bit closer together, uh, which makes it a little bit easier and I'm gonna go ahead uh, and copy that, and then I'm just going to paste it to all of these. And then let's go ahead and listen in. Today, Chris and Emily take us out of our usual routines to share their love with us, and to share their love of one of their favorite places in the world. So like that gets a little bit hot. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna adjust kind of all my levels here. Today, Chris and Emily take us out of our usual routines to share their love with us and to share their love of one of their favorite places in the world so far, Glacier National Park. All right, I like that. I typically like to have mine peaking around negative um, six. It will always depend, but let's find this. We are here today in one of our favorite places we know on this earth. We have gathered the ones who mean the most to celebrate our unity and marriage in a way that feels the most us it could be. I vow to be your forever hiking buddy in life. All right, I like that. So just gonna go through and level these out. And then we'll, last thing we'll do is an EQ in just a minute. I wanna pop in real quick here to point out that I forgot to talk about leveling my music track in this video. If you take a look though, you can see the keyframes that I've put in to bring down levels where there's some other audio from the day. I do go over keyframes at one point in this video if you aren't familiar with them, but that's how I go about doing that and I simply do it based on what sounds right to me as far as levels. All right, so we've got all of these um, kind of leveled out to where I want them. Now, if something's really kind of up and down even after the compressor, you can go in and you know you can use keyframes. So, um, oops, let's see. You know, maybe start here, put a keyframe in, and when it gets quiet around here, gonna work our way up to you know 12. You can also do gain um, if you need to go even further than what the volume allows you to. Um, but these are pretty much where I'd like them to be. Um, so from here, the next thing that I would typically do, um, again, on these, we are here today in one of our like I like kind of having a little bit of that wind noise, that nature that's going on just because that was so, you know, such a big part of their day. Um, but like this one, you've been a best friend and someone in my life. There's just some like be there for me, even halfway across the world. some subtle noise under it um, that I want to try to get rid of. So the next step would be an EQ here for me. And this, again, you know, guys, this is not my expertise. There are people who make livings off of this um, and they know way more than me. So definitely look into, 
you know, different courses specifically about audio if you want to get real deep. But typically these tricks have worked enough for me um, to get where I need to be. So I use the channel EQ. Um, there's a lot in here. Some of these are kind of presets. Um, but I like this one. The visuals of it are, are really good for me. You've been a best friend and someone in my life. And you can kind of play around with these different points um, to get rid of some of that noise. Or you can also use this to kind of boost the good parts or get rid of the bad parts of somebody's voice to just kind of, you know, tweak it um, to be a little more full, if that makes sense. You've been a best friend and someone in my life that never fails to be there for me, even halfway across the world. So like that kind of levels out some of that a little bit. And I couldn't imagine my life without you, your kind heart or support. So that, you know, super quick, but. You've been a best friend and someone in my life that never fails to be there for me, even halfway across the world. It is clear to me you are truly loved and adored by everyone in your life. And I couldn't imagine my life without you, your kind heart or support. So let's go ahead and listen to that without the EQ, and then we'll listen to it with the EQ. You've been a best friend and someone in my life that never fails to be there for me, even halfway across the world. It is clear to me you are truly loved and adored by everyone in your life, and I couldn't imagine you've been a best friend and someone in my life that never fails to be there for me, even halfway across the world. It is clear to me you are truly loved and adored by everyone in your life, and I couldn't imagine. So as far as audio goes, guys, that is pretty much all that I do. Uh, again, definitely look into some deeper audio solutions if you want to get deep into that, but this works well for me uh, as far as finishing touches on the audio side for my wedding films. Um, this one is pretty much good to go, I think, as far as things that I'm going to do to it. I'll, of course, make one last run through. Uh, in the next couple of videos, we're going to go over color grade as well as the finishing touches on the visual side. Uh, and we are coming to the end of this wedding film, getting close to delivery. Thanks for sticking with me, and I will see you guys in the next video.